Well, good evening and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, glad you're here with us. Uh, I just want to share some few things with you this evening. Won't, won't take much of your time. But I woke up this morning early and uh, was praying, and I felt impressed. I felt, as uh, 1 John 2 says, I had an unction from the Holy One. And that unction sort of propelled me to come before you this evening and share a few things with you. Uh, I, I want you to get your Bibles if you can. And if you can't, just, just pay attention. But if you can get your Bibles right quick, I want you to go to the book of Philippians. And I was up early this morning, and the Lord was speaking a few things uh, to me from that book uh, that I want to share with you. You know, Paul told Timothy, he said, I want you to preach the word in season and out of season. And he said, I want you to exhort. So this is an exhortation uh, that I want to bring to you. Uh, I bring this to our church family, uh, to our friends. Uh, we love you so very much. And uh, we, we just uh, thank God for you. Matter of fact, you see here in the book of Philippians chapter 1, in verse 3, Paul writing, he says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, always making requests with joy. And I want to say this to you, our church family, our friends, we are so thankful for you. We thank God for you, and we make mention of you in our prayers Matter of fact, here just shortly, uh, our, our prayer group's going to meet, uh, amen, and we're going to be praying uh, for you. Uh, hallelujah, what a blessing. Uh, we take this uh, very serious. It, it is our life. Uh, God has even instructed us and confirmed things to us uh, about the position and the strategic place that we have uh, as sons of God. And so we take that uh, uh, not only serious, but we do it with honor. But we love you. We bless you. Now, I want to share a few things here with you. Notice the sixth verse. This is something that the Lord spoke to me this morning. I want to emphasize there was, uh, there's a lot of great things in this, this chapter. All of this come out of the first chapter. But specifically, there were certain verses that he want, wanted me to exhort you in and, and, and uh, uh, share with you. So, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Now notice this, it says being confident, and the Lord wanted me to exhort you, he wants you to be confident. Why? Because he has begun a good work in you. He's the one that will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. The word perform there means to finish. Why is that? Because Isaiah chapter 46 tells us that he knows the end from the beginning. Revelation 22 tells us that he's the alpha and he's the omega. He's the first and the last. And so what we're dealing with now in our lives did not catch him off guard. Uh, no surprises to him. Matter of fact, as I said, the scripture says he knows the end from the beginning. And yet in this epistle, he says, you need to be confident. My brother and sister, I'm, in, I'm exhorting you today. Be confident. Why? Because he has begun something in you. He's able to perform it. He's able to keep you uh, from falling. He's able to present you holy, uh, the Bible tells us. The Lord is. And so, thank God. Be confident tonight. Be confident in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he goes on here in uh, verse 9. Here's, a, here's another scripture that he emphasized to me. He says, And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Notice this is till the day of Christ. Like I said, he's very much aware of where we are. Okay? This is until the day of Christ that you would be filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and the praise of God. He wants you to be confident. N number two, he wants you to abound in love. I wrote some things down here I, as I was praying, and the Lord was speaking to my heart. He wants you to abound in love. Matter of fact, this is something that Paul prayed. This is something he made mention of when he prayed for the church there at Philippi, which would apply to us. He wanted the people to abound in love. Notice this phrase. He wanted to abound in love in all knowledge and in all judgment, that they would approve the things that are excellent. Now, you've heard me say this before. That, that's a little bit wordy to us. But basically, 
what he wants you to understand is he wants you abounding so much in the love of the Father and the love of Christ that everything that you do uh, is being uh, influenced by that. It's called dwelling in love, uh, John wrote about. It eliminates all fear. Matter of fact, not only does it eliminate all fear, but other translation says it causes you to recognize and understand what is vital. Another translation says it causes you to understand and truly have revelation of what really matters. You know, there's some things right there that just don't matter. But there, there are things that do matter. And the love of God, uh, dwelling in this love, living in this love, letting it determine and dictate your decisions, your attitude, your mindset. So you're being driven, you're being influenced by the spirit of love himself because God is love. The spirit of God or the spirit of love is influencing you and it's helping you uh, not only to be at peace, it's casting out and eliminate the concern and the fear, but it's also causing you to recognize what is truly vital, what is of God, what's not of God. Okay, that's all judgment. And, and this is something, my brother and sister, that we can abound in. See, the Lord would never share things with us if it was impossible for us to live in that or to walk in that. He would be unjust to do that. He would be unjust to give us uh, these exhortations, these exceeding great and precious promises if we couldn't partake of them. But we can partake of them. And I encourage you tonight to partake and to abound in the love of Christ. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to get on down to this. He says here in verse 12, he said, But I would you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. Now, let me remind you, Paul was in prison when he wrote this epistle, this letter. Okay? It was a little more serious than house arrest. I mean, he was bound. Uh, we, we know that he was cast in prison. You can go to the book of Acts, you see this. And yet, l let me tell you, he, he didn't have the opportunity to even try to go get supplies that we can get. get. <sighs> he was in a place here. And yet, it wasn't God who put him in prison. But he was in prison. He was locked up. He was confined. He was incarcerated. It wasn't the Lord that put him there. Uh, matter of fact, everywhere he went, the same spirit that crucified the Lord himself wanted to kill him. I mean, they beat him. They stoned him to death. Everywhere he went. Listen, they did not want him out of this prison. Matter of fact, the jailer that we read about in the book of Acts, when the doors were opened by the power of God, he was going to take his own life, commit suicide, because he knew he was toast. He was responsible for the oversight of Paul. And, and of course, the other prisoners. And yet, when the doors were loosed and opened, he thought they had escaped, and he thought, I'm done. I'll just go ahead and take my life. And Paul said, stop. We're still here. Don't take your life. And he led him to the Lord. He led him to, to be born again. Okay? So we see that Paul was there. But yet Paul knew something. He knew that even though God did not cause this, yet God could take this and he could cause uh, the furtherance of the gospel to take place. And I'm going to tell you right now, I believe with all of my heart, and I exhort you tonight, that this situation that's going on around this, no, the Lord did not cause it. But I can tell you right now, through this and from this, the church uh, can further the gospel of Christ from this situation. And even personally. See, this is both individually and collectively. Praise the Lord. You know, Paul, that's why Paul said he's not ashamed of the gospel. For the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It's the power of God. You know, like I said, the devil and that spirit wanted Paul dead. Because the Bible tells us in John 10.10, 10, the thief comes not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. So we see, he said right here in verse 12, he said, The things that have happened to me have fallen out rather into the furtherance of the gospel. Listen, it may not even pertain to this situation, this COVID-19 virus that's going around. I want to say this to you. I feel impressed. This is something, uh, this is why the Lord sort of, I had this unction this morning. I don't care where you are right now in your life. Can you believe? Let, let me walk around here just a second. 
Can you believe that even though everything around you looks like you're enclosed, there's no hope. Can you believe, my brother and sister, that you're in a place now and even the things that's happened in your life that would really look negative, that would even look like the devil's having a heyday. Can you believe? I mean, because Paul was imprisoned here. I, I mean, he, 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 at that time, he's not getting out. Okay? In the natural. Can you believe that the things that have happened to you can even propel you? And God can use some things to help you to see the, even the greater so that you can go further than you ever thought you ever would. Especially by the way you see it at the moment. Can you see what I'm saying? I, I encourage you tonight in the name of Jesus. No matter what's happened to you, uh, God is greater. And God can further your life and your purpose. See, the gifts and the callings of, our, of God are without repentance. He's never changed his mind about you. No matter where you've been, no matter what has happened, even uh, no matter what's going on around us right now, you know, I believe and I am confident that he that's begun a good work in us, he will finish that work. It will get completed. We will run our race. We will finish our course with joy. We will fulfill the will of God in our lives. Take hold of that tonight in Jesus' name. Now, that's something he ministered to me. Also, he said this in verse 19. He says, For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer in the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Paul believed that the situation that he was in, the things that have happened to him, he really believed that it would turn to his salvation. You remember I said he knew the power of the gospel. He knew the power of what took place through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he said his own self, I've determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. We have been majoring on that of late. There, there's a reason why. Why? Because it kept his heart in a, cer a certain place. Even back in the Old Covenant, uh, it was a type and a shadow when that, that brazen serpent was lifted up on that pole and all those serpents and snakes were around them trying to take them out, bite them, kill them. As long as they fixed their gaze upon that serpent, on that pole, okay, which was a type of, of Jesus, Jesus said, if I be lifted up, okay, as long as they kept their eyes on Jesus, as long as you keep your eyes on Jesus, Paul had his heart fixed on him. He knew him. And he said, I know that this will turn for my salvation. And here's why he knew, because of two components. Two components. Number one, he said, because of your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Let me say something to you. Your prayers avail much. Your prayers matter. Now listen, we know that we must have the supply of the Spirit of Jesus. Everything that Jesus provided for us. That is a supply now. That's our inheritance that we can receive from by faith. That's why the Lord wanted me to encourage you. Paul was saying, this thing will turn. I'm talking about the very situation he was in. He said, it will turn. You know the situation we're in right now as a nation? It's going to turn. How's it going to turn? It's going to turn because of people who pray and people who know there's a supply that comes from our Savior. You know, he's the head of all principality and power. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus. And we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. And through that... There's a supply now that even like this situation when people were shut in, he was shut in, that that thing would turn. And the Lord was speaking this to me this morning. This thing shall turn by our prayers and the supply of the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's some things I could say here about this chapter. A lot of people tried to do things to even bring harm to him. Okay? Okay. Uh, their, their motive was really not for people. Uh, they would do things out of pretense to bring harm to him. Does that sell, uh, sound familiar with, the, with our leadership of our country? How people are trying to do things, okay? But I'm telling you, church, uh, our prayers and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ turns this thing for good, okay? Uh, for the furtherance of the gospel so that the church will truly be the church and, and both individually and collectively 
This is your own uh, divine call of God, the personal plan that he has for you, okay? Hallelujah. And for us as the body of Christ as a whole. Oh, I could keep preaching on this. But let me get here to the end of this thing. He said in verse 25, he says, And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you, continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith. So see, this was of faith. This was of grace. The supply of the Spirit of God was God's grace that came through His Son. The prayers from the church and from us is our faith that receives and takes hold of that. He goes on to say this in verse 27. He said, let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. In verse 28, and I want to close with this. And this was something that the Lord truly emphasized in my spirit this morning. He says here in verse 28, he says, and in nothing... And in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. I love the Amplified translation of this. So in verse 28, if you can get an Amplified Bible and look at it, if you don't have one with you right now, I encourage you to look it up. But let me just share this with you. He says this in the Amplified. He says, do not for a moment. Do not for a moment be frightened or intimidated by your opponent or your adversary. For how long? Not for a moment. Do not for a moment be frightened, be fearful, or intimidated by anything that's going on right now. He said, such constancy and fearlessness. Hallelujah. He said, don't be frightened or intimidated in anything. In anything. He said, but such constancy and fearlessness will be a clear sign and it will be a proof of their destruction But it will be your deliverance and your salvation, and that will come from our God, our Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he started this letter out. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining me this evening. Uh, I had that strong in my spirit, and I exhort you tonight. Be confident that what he's begun in us, even the church, both individually and collectively, he will perform it. Do not for a moment... Do not for a moment be frightened, intimidated in anything by our adversary. Okay? But such constancy and fearlessness. God's not giving you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. That in itself will rise up in you. And it will be a sure sign to the devil, to principalities and, and powers. We make manifest to the principalities and powers the manifold wisdom of God. We're the church. It's our, it's our time. And you're the church. You're members of his body in particular. I love you. I bless you in the name of Jesus. We pray for you. Matter of fact, we're about to pray for you here shortly. I love you. Thank you for joining us this evening. You have a great night. Sweet sleep to all. And we'll be back here tomorrow night at 7 o'clock live on Facebook. And, of course, we definitely look forward uh, to Sunday morning Easter service here at 11 a.m. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you.